Oftentimes, professional facilitators and facilitative consultants are offering more services than just facilitation services. In this video, I'm going to be describing what those other services are. I researched hundreds of facilitative consultant companies' websites to understand and analyze what the top services facilitative consultants offer clients. And I wrote it in a blog post, and now I'm sharing it with you in this video. So let's dive in. The first one is research. Facilitators will offer to do research, and this often is a part of a larger service that they'll be offering a client, such as an engagement plan or a management or strategy plan. And so for research, what you would be doing to conduct that service is um, primary research, such as conducting surveys, focus groups, or interviews with the client or the client's organization, or secondary research, such as researching publications, books, um, the material of the client's organization, and the final deliverable that you would be giving is a report of your findings from the research. And like I said, that's often going to inform another project or another larger service that you're offering the client. Um, but it is a really common service that facilitators provide. The second um, service that facilitators can offer are assessment and advisory services. So these are services, that it's also known as diagnostic um, or review, and these are services where you're going into a company and you are assessing their structure, their policy, their processes, maybe leadership performance, organizational culture, you're assessing some part of the company that the client has identified as needing, needing some help, right? Needing to improve. And some examples of that that I found through my research were things like quality reviews, um, board development assessments, organizational assessments, structural assessments, operational assessments, um, situational assessments, strategic alignment advisory services, right? So you're assessing some part of your client's organization. And the way that they tend to do that is through document review, observing, going into the clients, the organization's actual working environment and observing how people work um, through surveys, through interviews, through focus groups. Um, and you're doing all of that to inquire with the organization about the performance metrics, the quality, um, the effectiveness of whatever you're assessing. And the final deliverable tends to be kind of like an advisory based report where you're identifying the strengths of the organization, the areas of improvement um, and risks. And in addition, the report can even include recommendations um, such as tools or methods or strategies the organization can implement to help them with increasing the performance of whatever you came in to initially assess. So that would be assessment and advisory services. Let's move on to coaching and training. A lot of facilitators facilitate, but they also offer coaching and training. And so I put these two together because they tend to, I noticed in my research, they tend to be offered together. So a facilitator may also be trained as, um, you know, as a coach and will have, have also a training product that they offer a client. And so let's say there's a client that wants to increase leadership performance within their organization. You may come in as a trainer and offer a training about leadership performance and you may be even training people about how to be a facilitative leader, how to use facilitation 
um, within group dynamics. And then you could offer, if you're trained as a coach, coaching services, which help the leadership team to actually integrate the behavior change that's necessary to take the training from theoretical skill building to real applied um, learning, real applied behavior change. So this is a service that is so often provided that facilitators offer. Um, and that's why I have seen so many times like uh, the, the, you know, title of a facilitator is like facilitator, coach, organizational change manager, right? Oftentimes facilitators are so much more than just facilitators. Um, okay, so let's move on to number four. This is going to be design services. And wow, design services are huge. So many facilitators offer design services. And this is because oftentimes you're not just facilitating something. You have to design what you're going to facilitate. And you can also design something that you don't facilitate, right? So let me give you some examples of design. You could do event design, which is really common for, for a facilitator. You're designing the workshop, the meeting, the conference, the retreat. You're designing the agenda for that event. But you could also be designing things like public participation programs or projects. Um, or let's see, you're, you're in the conflict world, you're designing a dispute resolution model or system for the company um, or a conflict management system. You could be even designing things which would be more in the organizational development world like organizational design, right? That's a form of design. You could be um, designing dialogue application design or transformative process design, right? Pretty much anything that you want to design, you can design <laughs> and you can offer that as a service. And so how this is done is complex and I encourage you to read the blog to really get into the depths of it. But basically when you're offering this service as a facilitator, you're gonna be working with the client to understand why, what they want designed and why they want it. You're doing kind of like an initial consultation with them. And this can be a pretty large process where you're really working with a lot of different stakeholders or a lot of different members in the organization to understand what their needs are, what their interests are, what their challenges are, to, under, to design something that's really inclusive of what the whole organism needs and wants. Um, and then you're going to be actually designing it and you may be designing it, you may be co-creating it with the client, um, you may be just designing it on your own and then you're going to be giving a presentation of what you designed for them sometimes, you know, or sometimes you're just, if you're facilitating, you're just going to be like, all right, here's the agenda, let's now go into facilitation. Um, and sometimes, you know, for organizational design, that's a part of a much larger field that I don't have too much expertise on, but I know that sometimes you'll go from design to prototyping into implementation, where you're like, okay, now we're gonna implement this system into your organization or this new, um, you know, you know uh, process or this new, um, and whatever it is, oftentimes this stuff is like, pretty holistically designed complex and it's systems thinking. So you're going in and you're working with a client to implement it. So design services are huge. They are definitely a large uh, service that facilitators can offer. And they're really, cre it's a creative and it's, uh, it's diverse and unique. You can design whatever you want for a client. Okay, let's go on to, of course, the most common service that facilitators are going to offer, which is facilitation services. Um, you know, it's funny, it's just one service that facilitators tend to offer. Um, so facilitation services are, of course, you coming in as an unbiased third party facilitator, you're going to be supporting the client with usually trying to increase um, effectiveness or performance 
within a group, within a team, to help them get towards achieving a goal. And so types of facilitation services are like meeting facilitation, team facilitation, dialogue, workshop, conference, public forum, open house, you name it, whatever the event is that the client needs you to facilitate um, can be facilitated. And the way that it's done is that basically you assess with the client what their goals are, um, what their expectations are, what their current challenges are, and uh, so many other things. And so then with, you know, you can conduct things like individual interviews with the other people in the groups, um, you can gather survey data, and all of that's going to help inform um, the way that you design the facilitator guide and the exercises that you choose to do. And so um, you create the facilitator guide, maybe with the client or by yourself, and then you facilitate the event. Um, you sometimes using the facilitator guide, but sometimes you're just using emergent design because things don't go as expected. And really, like the service of op like offering facilitation service is there's a lot of different things that you're doing to actually offer that, right? Like you're creating an internal facilitator guide. You're also creating an external event agenda for the client. You're needing to prepare all the supplies and materials for the event. Um, you either need, you have to do some form of meeting documentation, either you're taking notes or the client's taking notes at the meeting. Um, sometimes the client will want you to take the notes and sometimes the client will want you to write up a report of the documentation from the actual event. So those are all of the kind of fun those are the actual final deliverables that are involved with an offering facilitation services. You're not just facilitating, you're doing, you're offering so many other things that are creating structure uh, for an event for the client. Okay, let's go on to the next um, service, which is going to be engagement. Now, engagement services are also known as participation services, public participation, community involvement, public involvement partnership building, um, coalition building. The whole idea with engagement services is that you, this is a huge long-term project that's utilizing participatory methodologies. So when you're offering an engagement service, this is way more than any of the other services that I already mentioned. So basically engagement services involve engaging um, stakeholders. Stakeholders such as committee members, um, employees, teams, public private um, partnerships, coalitions, service agencies, any stakeholder who's involved in your client's project. <laughs> Excuse me. So facilitative consultants basically create these long term comprehensive engagement plans and that plan will be determined by the goal of the client. And so there's basically four different goals that an engagement plan is working to achieve. And the first one is like just informing the stakeholders about whatever change the client um, is, is going to be doing, right? Like oftentimes an engagement plan is associated to a new project, a new program, a new development, a new policy, and you're wanting to engage the stakeholders about that. And the first goal would be just to inform them about the change. The second would be to consult them, to actually get their input about the change and get their feedback to incorporate in the change. The third would be actually partnering with stakeholders. So this would be more along the lines of coalition building and partnership building, where you're, in, you're not only consulting with them, but you're saying, hey, do you want to take responsibility for some of this change? And the fourth would be creating co-ownership with stakeholders. So this would be where there is no hierarchical power structures involved with the engagement plan, but it's very horizontally designed and it's saying, hey, let's get you on board to actually designing, co-owning the resource allocation or whatever's involved for this change that's gonna happen. 
And so let me give you some examples of engagement. We have community engagement, employee engagement, stakeholder engagement, team engagement, campaign engagement, public participation, public involvement, um, coalition building, and partnership building, which I already mentioned. Excuse me, there's something in my eye. So how it's done, my goodness, it's a long process. But basically it includes a bunch of these types of services, the ones I already mentioned. So oftentimes you're going to be conducting research, you're going to be conducting assessments, you're going to be giving training and coaching, you're going to be designing things, you're going to be offering facilitation, right? And you're going to be designing and conducting things like surveys and other participatory based events where you're going out into public spaces and you're really inviting these stakeholders to come and you know get gain their input and, and and inform them and you know do all of the things to help them understand the change that your client is wanting to communicate to them so you're often gathering huge amounts of meeting documentation huge amounts of data and then you're taking all of that data and you're analyzing it and you're interpreting it and you're writing up um, a finalized engagement report that the client then takes and that informs or that um, can inform at least the change that your client is wanting to create. So engagement, um, engagement services are really exciting, really long-term, really complex, and involve a lot of these subservices and really are like a huge kind of, um, you could say it's like a cash cow, right, of the types of facilitation services you can provide because these are services that nonprofits need, that local governments need, um, and they're huge projects with a lot of funding. So, Let's move on to the last service. <clears throat> this is going to be management and strategy services. You may notice as we go down the list, the services get more complex. So management and strategy services, really, I paired these two together because they're the same thing. Like management consulting is a large umbrella term and management and, and strategy falls under management. And so it's basically all about how to improve performance within an organization. That's what these are about. And so it's basically, it's creating a structured approach to leading organizations to a desired goal. It's creating a structured approach to change. And the value proposition to the client is that you're increasing coordination, you're increasing the effectiveness and the efficiency of this performance change. Um, and so you would be working with the client to design and implement this change, this plan that's leading to strategy, process, innovation, cultural or operational change. So management and strategy is all about change. So if you're in the change management world um, or you're a facilitator who wants to facilitate change, this is the, these are the types of services that you're going to be drawn to. And these include things like change management, conflict management, strategy management. We have portfolio and process management, organizational change and development, strategic planning, operational planning, scenario planning. Those are some con concrete examples of the services that, the, that falls under this bucket of management and strategy. And so, you know, how you conduct these services really depends on the scope of the deliverable, the size of the organization, the complexity of the organization. There's really so much to consider because you can conduct a one day strategic planning service and that's gonna be very different than conducting like a six month change management plan. And so, um, but I will say from all of the research that I did, there does tend to be a kind of a common 
um, path, a common phases that consultants, facilitative consultants take when doing this service. And so the first one is always just a consultation, right? You're gonna be meeting with a client to identify the problem and the opportunity and how they expect your service to help them reach their goal. Then number two is going to be doing some sort of assessment or impact analysis, right? So for the service, like, um, you know, a one day strategic, like if you're doing just the one day strategic plan, then that may be, or even like a week long strategic plan, you're just going to be having like a consultation meeting with the client to assess where the organization is at, talk about historical context, specific deliverables, stuff like that. But for complex services like change management, this could be like an organization wide assessment where you're talking with all the stakeholders involved, conducting lots of interviews and focus groups. Um, phase three is going to be actually facilitating and designing the change or the, the management or strategy plan. And so you're going to be like facilitating meetings and events. Um, using these change methodologies that complement the client's context. So the goal of the meeting and the event, the goal of these meetings and events is to support the client with identifying the change that they want to happen. Um, and that could be literally that could be like helping them design their own strategic plan, their own action plan, their own communication plan about the change. If you are a facilitative consultant, you are always working with the client to co-create the change that they want. You are never coming in and saying, here, here is how you need to do it, client. That's not facilitative. That's just you being a consultant. So this that that's why phase three is really facilitation and design. You are not designing the change. You are facilitating processes that help the client design it with you. And then of course, the last phase, phase four, is gonna be executing the plan. So that execution can involve um, like creating and carrying out a engagement plan right here comes back the engagement plan where you're like engaging the, the community the organization to inform them and consult with them or maybe even partner with them about the change and say hey this change is coming we we're going to change the culture we're going to change the operations get ready let's get you in, involved in it um it can be like supporting the leadership and the, or and the organization with cultivating competencies um, around strategy and around change um, through training and coaching. You could offer coaching and training services. Um, and you're also, through the implementation of the plan, you may be taking on like measuring performance metrics as a facilitative consultant. Um, so, so yeah, that's the last, uh, does, that's the last service that I found a lot of facilitative consultants offer. I know this was a long video, but you know, this is the complexity of what facilitators can offer. And I hope that it's helpful to start seeing very specific deliverables that you can offer clients. And I encourage you to look at the blog because I go into the what, the how, and the final deliverable, which is really a powerful way to describe to clients what your service is because facilitation and can be complicated and hard to describe to people. And if you're actually able to drill it down into here is the deliverable, here is the, the value through these performance metrics that I'm going to be offering you. Um, I just found that those consulting firms seemed to be a lot more successful than consulting firms that, that offered kind of more wishy-washy descriptions of their services. My name is Malia Josephine, and on this channel I talk about professional facilitation, facilitation consulting, facilitative leadership, and how to really launch into and navigate the facilitation field. Thanks.